Hi, this is Ryan Dawes, editor of Telecoms, and today we're having a look at the interoperability development test. Uh, yeah. So we have, sorry, I... Manjuna, you are uh, Ryan... <laughs> I'm Ryan Dawes, based? yep. Uh, we're in Bristol in the UK. Oh, in the UK, okay. okay. So, so Qualcomm, as you know, we've been um, working on 5G for the last four years, more than four years now. And now we see that the standard, the 3GPP standard for 5G is maturing. And we are at a point where we can do this uh, interoperability test with multiple vendors. So, so it's mean, the five uh, vendors at the moment, infra, Ericsson, Huawei, Nokia, yes. Samsung and ZTE. Right. So, so we have our prototype equipment, which you can see over there. So that is in five labs today. In Sweden, China, Finland, Korea. Okay. And we have our engineers in all these locations. We are trying out this interoperability test based on 5G and our standards. And this is utilizing 100 megahertz on the downlink and uplink. It has 256 qualm, it has 4x4 MIMO, and it's using the latest 5G NR slot structures. Okay. And uh, what you're seeing here is for Ericsson. This is where we have made the most progress. And you can see we have both downlink and uplink. And this, these metrics are actually coming live from Shista in Sweden. And we can have about more than uh, almost 1.2 gigabits per second on the downlink. Again, this is based on 100 megahertz, 256 qualm, and 4x4 MIMO. And uh, on the uplink, at this point, we have about more than 130 megabits per second on the uplink. Because okay. given the slot structure, we are using only 25% of the time for uplink. So it's a DDU, that means three downlink slots and one uplink slot. And we are using 2x2 two two and 64 core modulation on the uplink. So it's a little lower, but what we can show is the ping latency. So that is that is a key metric of, uh, of the system. Right? Yeah. Today, if you see an optimized LTE network, uh, sorry, not in the UK, uh, in, in Germany, um, maybe I don't I don't want to comment on uh, which operator, but. Uh, 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 optimized network in Germany, we see about 30, 30 milliseconds here. But what we are saying is that hey, 5G has the potential to go under 5 milliseconds. And anything today, the best case scenario, right? If you don't have anybody else on the network, and at the physical layer you can get is about 4 milliseconds. Okay. So that adds on, and you know, if you want to do it at the application layer, it goes up to 30 milliseconds. But with this, it can be sub 5 milliseconds. And these kind of latencies are very important for new applications coming in the future. For example, all the car to car communications, uh, some, uh, all kinds of sensors that you have, or uh, virtual reality is becoming bigger. So, those kind of things, uh, when, when they become mainstream, uh, you need those latencies. And 5G today, in release 15, it's heavily focused on the the phones, yep. but that's not the, the full story. So that's just the first step. So going forward, we'll have different kinds of services, low latency services, and with the same slot structure, you can support all these things. And that's the main message of 5G and R, that you don't have to make any change to the existing slot structure. And for the operator especially, it's very beneficial because once you deploy this network, you can, it's so flexible, you can make, make use of it for different new services that come up. Awesome. So what kind of speeds are we currently expecting when uh, when we get a full rollout? When we have full rollout. Uh, if you have a single user, that's what you would get. Yeah. Right? When you have multiple users, that's when things get divided in terms of time, frequency, space. So if you have a single user, pretty much that is what you would get. I mean, you may be thinking, hey, I have a gigabit LTE, I have two gigabits per second in LTE. But you have to keep in mind, every LTE is mostly on the FDD bands. That means if they say 100 megahertz, that means it's 100 megahertz on the downlink, another 100 megahertz on the uplink. But this is actually TDD. What it means is you have just 100 megahertz, in that you're using doing both uplink and downlink. Not at the same time, but you're using the same frequency to do both transmissions. 